I'm feeling good. I hope you like my jokes. I'm in a good mood today, and I'm excited to minister this word. Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 18. And when you have it, just say unity. That's what I'm going to speak to you about today, unity. It reads like this. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you, look at this, that if two of you agree, just touch your neighbor and just tell them, agree with me. Tell them, please agree with me. Look what it says. It says, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, look at this, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. He says, for where two or three are gathered together in not any name, but how many know in Jesus' name, I am there in the midst of them. Shout on that. Just say yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Matthew. I want to talk to you on the subject of unity. Unity. I want to speak on this subject because have you ever have you ever had a question for God? I had a question for God many years ago. And I my question to God was, how do great things come to pass in the kingdom of God? How do we get things done? If God's called us and chosen us, don't you think we ought to have a desire to get things done? And I said, God, you called me, but how are we going to get it done? How do we get things done? And how many know whenever you have a question for God, God will always point you right back to his word. I was telling my 16-year-old daughter the other day, I said, when you read the Bible, you're getting the mind of God. How many love the Bible? And so I said, God, how do you get things done? He pointed me to his word. I said, how do you accomplish the task? And we find in the scripture that he teaches two powerful principles to get things done, to accomplish whatever mission that he has given you. How many of you here this morning, God has given you some kind of mission, some kind of mission? Well, the first way to get things done, number one, is nothing can be done without prayer. How many of you have been enjoying praying on Wednesday night? I heard people are gathering at 830 to pray on Sunday morning. And prayer is how we get things done. Prayer actually activates our God-given authority. And prayer gives us the mind of God. And prayer ushers in the power of God. Jesus told his disciples, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. So I want you to know that we have keys in our hand. And, and the key that every one of us has is something called prayer. See, it's important to understand the power of the key of prayer, because many Christians, there might even be some here this morning, walk as prisoners to their circumstances. They walk as prisoners to their circumstances. Whenever a situation rises in their life, they, they move into fear. They walk as prisoners in their circumstances. But you know what prayer does? Prayer takes you from being the inmate to being the jailer. You missed a good place to give God praise. You don't got to walk in your circumstances. You don't got to walk in fear. You don't got to walk in what people said about you. You've been given the keys to the kingdom. You have authority. And when you begin to pray, that's when the power of God begins to show up. I'm going to need you to give him a little bit of praise. Help you preach out this morning a little bit. You're not the prisoner. You're the jailer. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So I want you to know that as we've been praying as a church and as the spirit of prayer is alive in our midst, I want you to know that heaven has been being loosed in people's lives. I, I've been getting report after report after report of people receiving healing in their body. Seven different reports of supernatural healing. Our very own Pastor Johnny recently came with a report that he's been healed of hepatitis. He walks healed today. Johnny, stand and wave at everybody. Stand and wave. They all know you, but wave at the ones that don't know you. 
Because we serve a God that is able to heal you. Different reports and miracles taking place. Had a, had a report recently of, of, of someone coming to me and saying, man, God has been speaking to me. We've been gathering together in prayer. And many people don't need healing. If they could fix the speaker, it's buzzing real bad. Uh, many people are, are, are not just praying for healing. Some are not sick. But some are praying for direction. And they're praying for the spirit of God to lead them. And people have been coming up to me and saying, Pastor, God is speaking to me, not only for my life, but God is speaking to me about the church. And as we gather to, how many know when you talk to God, God will talk back to you? How many need God to talk back to them right now? And they say, God's been speaking. Other people come to me and say, you know, Pastor, man, I've been, we've been getting ideas. I'm not sick. I don't have any particular need, but I've been really asking God to give me some fresh ideas. That's been my prayer. That's been my prayer, man, because I don't want to be preaching the same sermons to you all the time. If I can't, nothing that, something that doesn't minister to me isn't going to minister to you. Ministry that doesn't change me doesn't change you. I need a fresh anointing. Can I just preach to you a little bit? I need a fresh anointing. Who needs a fresh anointing in their life? And people said, Pastor, God's been speaking to me, giving me direction, giving me words. I, I, Julian, yesterday, man, I'm so proud of. Julian, Julian, stand and wave at the people. Come on, somebody. How many love Julian? This man told me yesterday, he goes, I heard this idea from God, Pastor. We're sitting in that gym. And he said, God told me to put on an evangelistic basketball tournament. And how many know whenever God tells you to do something, he'll bless it? He had 43 teams signed up from all over San Diego. They came all the way from the Imperial Valley. And he said, I'm not going to let them play basketball and just give them a prize. We're going to preach the gospel to them. And Alex Macias, I want you to stand. He's an evangelist. He st keeps standing. Stay standing. He stood at center court. And I've never seen such an anointing on him before. He preached the entire gospel to every one of those people. And the power of God moved in that basketball tournament. Let me talk to you, some of you young people who can't get up here and get a slot to preach on a Sunday night or on a Wednesday night or in the gang. You know what? Go to the streets and make your own pulpit. Go win somebody for Jesus. And you know what's awesome is our own basketball team from our church won the money. That's a double blessing. So how many know the first way to get things done is through prayer? But I want to get down to the subject that I believe is so important is that if you want to get things done, God says you've got to walk in unity. You've got to walk in unity. Everybody say unity. Prayer moves mountains. But it's unity that gets Jesus involved. He says if two of you agree on earth, look at this, concerning anything. That anything word is a big word. Talk to me. It's not just ministry, but anything, family, business, a project. Someone say anything. anything. If two of you agree on anything, it will be done for them. Where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. So what does God say? He says when two people come into agreement about a thing, God promises, according to his word, to be in the midst of two people who come into agreement, and what we find in the scripture that I'll teach you in a moment is that unity brings great results. Unity brings great results in anything, whether it's a church, whether it's a family, whether it's a marriage. Unity, someone say unity, brings great results. You know, even when people get together for evil, how many know some people in your world that they have a habit of getting together for evil? Right. You know, the Bible even teaches that when two people get together for evil, that God will even come and take a look at it. Remember the story of the people that said, we're going to build a tower that's going to reach the heavens. The people came into agreement and, and they wanted to build this tower. They started building the Tower of Babel. And what did God do? God says, I got to see what these fools are doing. <laughs> Talk to your pastor this morning. I got to see what these dummies are doing. And the Bible, he already knew, but he came down to look at it and he saw that. It wasn't about him. It was about them. So then the Bible says what he did is he confused their language. 
See, because when people can speak the same language, they can do things. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting in this way. When people could speak the same language and walk in the same spirit and walk in the same heart, they can do some things. But here's the key. We're not called to build something that's going to glorify the devil. We're not here to build something that's going to destroy our families and destroy our marriages and destroy our children's destiny. We are here to build the plan of God in our life, the plan of God in our family. I'm waiting on you right now to get excited. We're here to build something for Jesus in this place. Touch your neighbor and tell him, agree with me. There's examples in the scriptures of how people came together, not for an evil cause, but a righteous cause. Three Hebrew children came in agreement against a corrupt and unrighteous society, and God saved them from the fiery furnace. The fourth man was with them. There's the scripture. A young warrior named Jonathan and his armor bearer defeated an entire garrison of Philistine soldiers because they came into agreement, heart and soul. Someone say heart and soul. And when they came together, heart and soul, God gave them the victory. That'll preach to a marriage. Number three, in the New Testament, four friends agreed for another friend who was sick. And together they broke through the roof of a house to get their friend to Jesus. And their friend was healed and they were forgiven of their sins. Come on and clap for God's word. Come on and clap for the truth this morning. You've been living a lie. Clap for the truth. You've been lying to yourself. Clap for the truth this morning. Woo. Is it true or not? 120 people came in agreement in prayer in an upper room. And the greatest outpouring of God's spirit that the world is at, that's still burning today, came together because people walked in agreement. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, turn there with me. I love this scripture. It talks a little bit more about unity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, look at here. It says, two are better than one. <laughs> Two are better than one. You want to get something done? Find a partner. You want to do great things? Find a partner. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. See, let me stop here and talk to some of you who come to church by yourself. You're here. Because you fell and no one wanted to pick you up. And you heard there was a church called Victory Outreach that we knew how to pick up people that came out of the lifestyle that you were in. But let me tell you something, my friend. If you're here alone, you're not called to be alone forever. <laughs> you got to change the way you live. You got to change the way you act. You've got to make yourself into a worthy partner so that somebody might want to partner with you again. I'm preaching better than you're Come on, talk to your pastor. You, you got to grow, baby. You've got to grow yourself. Because the Bible says two are better than one. And we need people. Woe to him who was alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. And again, if two lie down, they keep warm. Don't lie down with nobody right now. Amen. <laughs> and how could one be? You've been lying down too much. That's your problem. How does one stay warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can, un can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Two is strong, but three is unstoppable. And we got more than three here this morning. We got more than three. Come on and clap. I, if you're not liking this word, something's wrong with you. This is a good message. <laughs> That's cold. No, it's a fact. It's a good message right here. Who's liking this message right here? It's good stuff. Unity, number one, write this down. According to the scripture, brings good success. Two are better than one. They have a good reward for their labor. When we work together, we see greater results. How many of you say, I'm tired of old results? I want greater results. I want better results. I've had some good results in the past. I want better results in the future. Well, the Bible says here that when you work with someone else, 
and, and you link up with the right people, you'll have better results. Henry Ford said this, the great automaker, he said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress, but working together is true success. So what does it teach us very clearly? Number one is that agreement brings success. Unity brings success. Another word for unity or agreement is something called partnership. Say partnership. I, I could stop and preach on that for three days just on the word partnership and start with this question. Who are you partnered with? And question number two is, are you winning or are you losing? Someone say partnership. Partnership brings good success. See, partnership is when two people are called to walk together. Not divided. Not confronting one another. Be careful with those confronters, boy, man. You know what, man? I know some people that they'd love to confront. Well, the Bible says confront. No, no, no. You need to chill. The reason people don't like you is because you're always confronting everybody about everything. Just shut your mouth and pray and be nice to people. Well, I'm going to tell them and I'm going to keep it real. That's why no one likes you. Because you always want to keep it real, man. Be humble, shut up, go to God, read your Bible, stop fighting on every battle and fighting every war. Come on, somebody, slow your roll. Then maybe you'll find a partner. trying to help you today someone say partnership. partnership to walk together to walk in a common mind in a common heart and in a common vision with love Jesus said love one another that the world will know that you belong to me you know why people not only come to church but stay in church is when they see that the brothers and the sisters love one another. There's a lot of love in this place, you see? And when you walk together, it makes the church a more powerful and greater witness to the world. That was Jesus' unanswered prayer, that they would love one another so that the world would know that they are my disciples. Someone say partnership. We've got a partner. We've got to link up with the right people. You know why this church has been successful? Because you've got two waves that linked up. You've got wave number one. Pastor Louie, come on, stand up here. He, I think you're a first-generation waver. Come on up here. <laughs> wave number one. Come on, give God a praise. This is wave number one. And, and he determined his heart. He was going to do the vision. He was going to do what God called him to do. He was changed and transformed by the power of God. God delivered him from drug addiction, gang violence, brought him out of depression, fear, blessed him, got married in the house of God. Come on, somebody. But then another generation rose up, the second generation. That was me. I said, I'm going to partner with a man like Louie because he's got the secrets to success. He's still in the house of the Lord, no matter what the devil has thrown at him. But guess what? There's a third wave coming up. Johnny come on up here this is the third generation the third wave and this generation is smart they're in shape they're good looking they got the vision we're walking together in purpose we've got to link up because a threefold cord cannot be defeated Woo! come on and give jesus a big big praise in this way come on and clap for the lord man we represent your families your children Touch your neighbor and tell him, walk with me. But who are you walking with? Who are you working with? Who are you linked up with? Are you having victory or defeat? Because the right people lead to the right places, which lead to the right results. I'll say it again. The right people lead you to the right places, and you get the right results. We've all linked up with people that led us to the wrong places. You walked in there, you knew, I don't belong here. I shouldn't ever came to TJ that night. Talk to me, somebody. And you felt guilty and dirty on the way back over the border because you got with the wrong people that led you to the wrong places. But how many know when you link up with the right people, they lead you to the right places, you're going to get the right result. 
Come on and clap for the right result. Come on and thank him for the right result. Woo. So we got to link up with the right people. The second thing is that unity brings encouragement. For if you fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who's alone when he falls, for he has no one to lift him up. And it goes on. When I think of encouragement, this is where the partnership comes in. I think about partnership. I think about fellowship. The five people you spend the most time with will determine the man or the woman you become. Who are your five favorites on your phone? That's who you are. You show me a man's company, you show me who he is. You show me a woman's company, you show me who she is. You might have one fool in your circle, but don't have four. Okay, well, Jesus said dying with sinners. Yeah, but he also walked with believers. Can I hear an amen? Partnership, fellowship. One of the greatest partnerships in the New Testament was between two men by the name of Paul and Barnabas. Paul was radically saved by the power of God, and then God led him to connect with the right people who would lead him to the right place that he would get the right result. And in the, in the church of Antioch, he linked up with a man by the name of Barnabas. Now, Barnabas was not his real name. Barnabas means the son of encouragement. If you, you know, in the church, everybody's got, not everybody, but some people got nicknames, especially here in Victory Outreach, like Ganchi. That's not his real name. <laughs> to this day, I don't know what Ganchi means, right? But his name's David Garcia. You got a guy in our church by the name of Junebug. That's a cool name. But that's what we know him as. In, 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 in the New Testament, there was a man, watch this, by the name of Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Some say his real name was Joseph, a common name of that time. But somehow he developed a reputation for encouragement. He became an encouragement to the apostles. He became an encouragement to the church in which he served. He became an encouragement to his brothers and sisters in the Lord. You say, well, what made him such an encouragement? I'll tell you what made him an encouragement. According to his story in the book of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says everybody was selling their goods so that the church could be the church that God called it to be. And there were two people who came to church that tried to fake it. And the Holy Spirit knocked them down. Who were they? Ananias and Sapphira because God wanted to kill that lying spirit. And kill that cheap spirit. God says, I can't build a church with cheap people. Can't build a church with ungrateful people. So, during that same season, Joseph gave it all. Gave it all. Sold it all, gave it all. He did so well that the people looked at him as an encouragement. Woo! Powerful. They said, hey, there goes Brother Joseph, the son of encouragement, not the son of you know what. <laughs> don't get mad at me because that's what people secretly say about you when you don't do what God has called you to do. Is this too strong for you? I thought you guys were maturing in this place. I thought you were growing in the family life flow. I don't want to be a son of a gun. I want to be a son of encouragement. Come on, somebody, and clap for the Lord in this place. Son of a gun. I don't know what you were thinking. So here's Paul with a big mission. But he's got to be linked up with the right man. So the Holy Spirit linked him up with who? the son of encouragement. See, how do you get things done? How are you going to get things done in your marriage? How are you going to get things done in your family? How are you going to get things done in the ministry? 
How are you going to get it done? How many want to get things done? How are you going to get those results? You, you got you to partner. You got to fellowship. You got to link up with the right people. When I think of people that I like to link up with, I think of people that have the five Ps. Number one, I link up with people who have purpose. I, I link up with people that are sometimes too busy for me. That sometimes don't answer my phone call. Don't answer my text message. I don't want to link up with some joker that's just sitting on his couch all day. I want to link up with someone who's doing something with their life. Come on, somebody. Date, date, date a guy or a girl that's doing something with their life. Why am I, this is not even the youth section no more. Let me go over here. <laughs> well, maybe the youth are doing it. Maybe I should look in the middle. <laughs> Don't link up with the first and available, most available person. Link up with the person that's got a purpose, that's got a calling, that's got a destiny, that's going somewhere, that's showing you that they can produce some results in their life. I'm preaching good. I'm preaching the house down and you're not even shouting. I am helping you so much. The word of God is helping you so much. You ought to give God the biggest praise you can right now. Second service isn't going to get it as good as you're getting it. Who do I link up with? People with passion. Visible passion. Exciting people, not deadbeat duds can't shout in church can't sing in church can't you know no passion you got to call them to wake them up in the morning i, I want to be around people that don't need an alarm clock their purpose wakes them up their vision wakes them up Woo! the holy ghost wakes them up come on somebody i want to link up with people who have perseverance That they don't quit over every disappointment. They don't cry over every little thing. They don't leave the church and talk bad about the pastors and talk bad about the church or disrespect the people of God because they're having a bad day. Keep those people far away from me. Because I'm a winner. I don't walk with those type of people. I walk with people that have heart, that can persevere through trials, that can make it through. Come on, somebody. I've got people in my church that have fought sickness and still don't miss a Sunday. And you can't come because someone didn't shake your hand. I'm having fun preaching this, Charles. This is fun. Who's with me on this one? Who likes this? I'm having fun preaching this. I, I, I also partner with another pe people who are peaceful. Peaceful. They comb their hair. All hell's breaking loose. They still iron their clothes. They're like. <laughs> now, I know sometimes we look shot out, but the point is, is that. The point is, is that there's a spirit of peace on them. I might be freaking out. I have a tendency to freak out. And when I talk to them, they look at me and go, hmm. Everything's going to be okay, Pastor. I said, I need you in my life. Come on, somebody. How many need some more peaceful people on your team? Come on, clap for the Lord. I'm trying to help you. And then the last thing is this, is I, I, I like to hang out with prosperous people. Now, being prosperous don't mean being rich. Being prosperous is just knowing that God is more than enough. You should see me and my friends when we go out to eat. I got friends we go out to eat. And there's a whole fight that breaks out at the end of the meal. Who's going to pay for it? 
I got it. No, I got it. I've literally had to fight with Chris and Miller and Aldo and Pastor Sonny and different friends. And no, I got no, you got me last like T-Rock. You got me last. I got you this time. Now they get smart. They just act like they're going to the bathroom. Where some of you used to go to the bathroom and we wanted to miss the check. They go to the bathroom, but they pay the check and they come back and say, it's all taken care of, Pastor, because I'm rolling with some people that know that God is more than enough. Somebody. They're here. He said, there ain't no people like that, Victor. He said, oh, no, no. If you say that, you're that person. You're in the wrong crowd. They're here. Tell your neighbor, they're here. But they got to have all five Ps to roll with me. They can't be prosperous and unpeaceful. Prosperous and unpassionate. They got to have all five Ps. You want to be on my team? You got to have all five Ps. How about your team? Come on, give God a praise. This is good stuff. What's the final thing? Unity brings strength and defense. Someone say unity. Unity, teamwork. Two stand together can overcome an attacker, an attacker, they can fight an attacker. But when you have three standing together, it takes your strength to a whole nother level. That's why I tell you today, now I'm using myself as an example and say, these are the people that I look to walk with, but what about you? You could look at me and say, man, pastor, well, you know, you said some things that sounds arrogant. That sounds, no, listen, understand, I've been doing this 25 years. I've learned a thing or two. I'm trying to take what I've learned and give it to you. Because the same success that's on Pastor Al and Sister Georgina is the same success that God wants to bring to your home. How many want that success in their life? Then understand me when I tell you that you've got to pick the people that are going to help you win. You've you got to date the right people. You've got to marry the right people. You've you got to Pick the people. See, see, let me tell you this. Daters. Where are my daters at? Don't wave your hand at me. Should I tell them, Gachi, the truth? Looks fade. Looks fade. Looks fade. Georgina still looks good, but you should have seen me. I used to be skinny. Seriously, dude, I look at that picture and I cry sometimes. Like, what happened? I try, you know. But looks fade. But your character should be getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You should be going from glory to glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength. Come on, I'm almost done preaching. You, you got to keep growing. And when you choose those people in your life, how many want to get greater results? Understand you're going to need them when you come under attack. Any person that ever had a great vision came under attack. And I wonder if the per people you're rolling with are going to come to your aid or they're going to flee. When all hell begins to break loose, are they going to step up or are they going to step back? Woo! When you get sick in body, are they going to be by your bedside? Or are they going to be dipping and dodging? And crying like a little baby. Well, I got to look out for me. Man, I should never have picked you. <laughs> Till death do us part in sickness and in health. Do you agree with that? Or you, if you don't agree with it, don't clap. But if you agree. See, I got to teach this stuff. Because sometimes you assume that people know, but I'm finding out that we got to teach it. 
We got to teach you how to be a husband. We got to teach you how to be a wife. We got to teach you how to be a father. We got to teach you how to be a mother. We got to teach you how to be a son, how to be a daughter. Come on, somebody. How many know we're going to another level? This is the year to build and be everything God has called us to be. To get stronger. Touch your neighbor, tell him you gotta get stronger. Because the devil, the devil wants to attack you. Now you're scared, huh? You're like, oh. Who's not scared of the devil? The devil wants to entice you. The devil wants to take you away. From what God has for you. The devil wants to take you young people out of your home. He wants to bring division in your family. The devil, understand, desires to attack you. He desires it. He wants to attack you. So when he comes, who are you rolling with? I picked a woman that knows how to fight. I figured out early in our marriage that when she used to fight me, I said, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to turn it. Like, don't fight me. Let's fight the devil. Because, man, come on, somebody. I sense that strength in her. Can I hear an amen? And I mean, we need some marriages that are going to start fighting the devil and start overcoming the enemy that wants to attack them. Find someone that can fight. You got that. Find partners in the church that can fight. Because the Bible says a threefold cord. Find those people, the 6P, who know how to pray. That aren't going to hear your every problem, but they're going to just say, you got to pray. Because we don't have the answers anyway. Can I hear an amen? amen? Give God a praise. I'm done with this. Amen. I'm done. As they come to the keyboard. We're going to receive the tithe and the offer. I told you I wasn't going to speak on giving. But how many receive this message? How many feel this was a great message for this morning? Unity. Partnership. Fellowship. Togetherness. Oneness of mind. Oneness of heart. Oneness of spirit. Oneness of strength. And the final point is this, is that unity makes us shine. Unity brings a glow. You know, everybody hates the Patriots. Any Patriot fan, I hope no Patriot fans were harmed in, this, in that statement. But I gotta tell you something, my brother, you're a Patriots fan? Well, I gotta tell you something, I don't know if you know this, but everybody hates the Patriots. But you know why? Because they keep on winning. Everybody hates the Lakers. You like that we're down right now. You like it, huh? You like it, huh? We'll be up again. Because we got 16 rings. We're going to keep on winning. Can I hear an amen? We'll be back. And when they win those titles, they hug each other. Did you see Tom Brady when he won the Super Bowl? He kissed the owner on the lips. Did you see that? Imagine me kissing Chris on the lips. Brother, brother. Chris, he would, have, he would kiss me. He would go, brother, get away from me. What are you trying to do? They kissed each other on the lips. Did you see that? Who saw that? I don't know if I want that much unity. <laughs> he won, he went, grabbed him, and I was like, what in the world is this? I'm trying to kill that spirit. Hey, Amen. I can see why he did it, though, because 
winning feels good. And winning brings us together. And when we're winning and when we're together, and that's why I can't keep these things from you. I gotta share. How many feel like I should share things with you like this? How many feel like I should share these things with you? When we win, that's when we begin to shine. But who do we shine to? Are we trying to win some competition in the ministry? They're not giving out prizes for the biggest churches. They're not giving out Oscars for the best preachers. They're not giving out prizes for the best leaders. It's, oh, San Diego, you know, oh, look at them, you know. Anybody who goes after that is, is dumb. We're not here to try to outdo each other. We're not here to compete with each other. We're here to complete each other. When you win, I win. When I win, you win. You should see how excited I get when I see God blessing your business. And God blessing your marriage and God blessing your children and you roll up in that new car. Oh my God, I roll up. I said, praise God. Look what the Lord is doing. Because how many know winning feels good? But you know what it does is, is we're not trying to win to compete with other churches. We're trying to win sinners to Christ. We want people to know that when they come here, they're coming to a church that knows how to win. That knows how to win. So, uh, so I ain't winning, Pastor. You know, he's looking at me like that. I ain't winning. Yeah, because you don't listen. But if you would listen, you'd start moving in greater victory. You'd start moving in a winning spirit. Come on and give God a praise. I'm done. I'm done right now. That's love right there. Come on. How many know love? How many know we got the keys to the kingdom this morning? Just right there. Lift up your hands right there. Father, we thank you. We're not going to make an altar call, but we're going to do it right here. Lift up your hands. If you want to sit down, it's fine. Whatever. Just lift up your hands. Father, thank you for wisdom. Come on. Thank him for wisdom. Say, Lord, thank you for wisdom. Say, wisdom builds the house. Say, wisdom builds the house. Say, wisdom fills the room.